Hi, Shilpa. How are you? Hi, Mandi. I'm good. How are you? Very well. So I am just following your updates, and I'm so excited for the third part, trilogy <laughs> part to come out very soon. Tell us how is it going on? Oh, it's good. I uploaded the final document last night, so it's all ready for everyone to get it on the sixth of November. Uh, it's been great actually, and I've uh, I've loved this journey because to be to be really honest, when I started writing Love, Marriage, and Other Disasters, I didn't um, genuinely have a series in mind at that point. I just okay. wrote a story, you know, and and I think because I am a person with very strong uh, family family connections, and like I've grown up like this, you know, cousins and everybody all being mm-hmm. one part of one big family kind of thing. I wrote it like that, and okay. then once the book came out, everyone was like, "No, but what happened? What about Arjun? What about Arjun's story?" <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, I'll write a story for Arjun." <laughs> and then when Arjun's story came out, and then everyone was like, "Oh, but you what know, about Arun's Arun's story. <laughs> <laughs> so it it just sort of it was more of a you know gradual sort of progression. So it wasn't something planned, but it's been great fun. It's been great fun doing this. Yeah. So uh, for those of us, uh, those of who are listening to us and don't know about it i just want to tell that shilpa suraj has written a three book trilogy series which talks about the story of three brothers and how they are distinctly different from each other and yet they are so lovable and relatable and besides that the three female protagonists that they are they all three of them are attracted to and ultimately get married to they are also such a uh, strong female character i must say and very Uh, inspiring all three of them because yeah. <laughs> uh, I, i have read only one book which is the second one the yeah. story about arjun but i absolutely loved it and my review I you have already read i i have been raving <laughs> on about it in the review and those who have read the review have also you know uh, made some uh, come back and ask me where to buy the book and all that because <laughs> that was such a detailed review and as i had mentioned to you earlier when i enjoy a book i try i try to write as much about it as possible yeah, yeah. <laughs> no and it's true yes i yes. think we tend to uh, be a lot more brief and we don't know what to say <laughs> in our review <laughs> even after the writing the review i was like you know i am i think i'm missing out something which i like but okay i think she she gets the point and the readers will also get a point that i have loved the book <laughs> so after that reading in fact i actually had a few questions and uh, yeah. as any reader would have after reading a book and getting yeah. to know the author and what be- went behind the making of that character and what be- went behind yeah. making of the book so i have a few questions to ask if you are ready to answer of them of course always ready <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is uh, your books they are touted as uh, the indian mills and boons so tell us about how came uh, how that came about so actually to be honest these books aren't uh, touted as the indian mills and boons i think the indian mills and boons tag is attached to my name because my first two books were published by mills and boons india Oh okay yeah. so so yeah so the tag is actually attached to me not to the series <laughs> 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 but when i was reading it i was like you know uh, taken back to the time when during my teenage when i used to read books on chicken soup and indian uh, mills and boons because yeah, 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 yeah. they have a very <laughs> characteristic trait uh, around them like like those those books and yeah. i must say i was very very nostalgic and very impressed by that <laughs> <laughs> thank you so i think i mean like i keep telling everybody i i um, so for some people romance i mean not romance but reading reading is uh, cathartic and for some people it's escapist uh-huh. right and for some it's it's a mix of both for me i think to a large extent it's always been escapist i've read to you know step into another world a world outside of the real world so i tend to gravitate towards these books that leave me with a very feel good feeling so and i think because as a reader that's what i enjoy i tend to try to put that across in my writing as well it's just it's more subconscious than conscious to be honest <laughs> and that so, definitely shows in your uh, narrative and your characterization and but you have to tell me manali because i have also read your books <laughs> so i wanted to know do you have a favorite genre in which to write with 
write in? Uh, so yes, I, I I have actually not ventured into the longer form of writing of novel uh, or novel. Okay. Uh, okay. My my favorite genre to write is poetry. In fact, I I began okay. writing with poetry. Uh, okay. And uh, post that, I I ventured into writing micro tales, which are you know four to five sentence stories. Right. Which I have also seen on your uh, feed. <laughs> <laughs> to write about uh, your daughter. <laughs> my daughter, yeah. No, my daughter writes her own stories. <laughs> I just relate it. <laughs> She's and a are so chuckle worthy. I, I, whenever I am, you know, going through the Instagram or Facebook spe- uh, feed and I come across your post, and I, I always chuckle when I read those posts. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I think. Honestly, I don't think uh, fiction could ever rival real life. I think real life is just like <laughs> something yeah, else. So actually, Which that's my favorite genre to, to write. <laughs> yeah, so, so like that, that like actually is. slice of life of writing is kind of my genre. That's okay. irrespective of whatever it is, whether it's a poem or it's a micro tale or yeah. a short story. My stories yeah. tend to be more towards slice of life. Okay, but that's that's difficult, isn't it? It's challenging to actually fit it into those uh, into a shorter word count, don't you think? It is. It is actually people think that my writing micro tales and short stories is easier, but it's actually yeah. more difficult, I believe, than no, writing a novel. It is. It is much more difficult, I think, because I think I attempted one novella, My Heart's Regret. I've never written otherwise. Uh, I mean, mine have always been full length books otherwise. Uh, that one novella trying to get the whole story packed into that word count was like the biggest challenge I ever <laughs> took up. No, but so that, I, I think actually as a writer, uh, I think uh, writing something more challenging is more satisfactory for me at least. Oh, because right. uh, trying to venture into something you have no, never done before, it's it's something exhilarating for you. And in fact, even those who read the final product. And speaking of, I think one of the toughest things to write, and this is just purely my opinion, is poetry, you know, because I couldn't, I really couldn't. I'm so bad <laughs> at it. Even if I try, I would never be able to do it. But I, I mean, I'm in awe of anyone who says they're writing poetry and yours is lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. You you might have observed the poet in me in the book also, which you have read. Yes. Because after yes. Each, yes. Uh, each short story, I've dabbled yeah. into some poetry as well. <laughs> What I liked about your short stories a lot is, you know, that each of those stories, no matter how short they were, they had a message in it, which I think is, again, not easy to convey. I think everyone starts out trying to put a message across, but to be able to convey it with impact and to do it in such a short period and such a short space is really creditable. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am glad that um, that message has reached out to you and so many other readers who have uh, actually read the book. And in fact, uh, like you, they have uh, also mentioned that how each story conveys a message and uh, it does so without being very preachy. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Without being preachy, which is so important because otherwise you just lose the reader's interest. No? Yeah. <laughs> if you have to hit them over the head with the message, then there's really no point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that just, uh, you know, makes it lose the charm, I believe. When you're yeah. trying to, you know, the, convey the message in words, like, yeah. Really in your words, it, it just uh, makes it lose the charm, I believe. Yeah, it's like trying to explain, no? A, like, say you crack a joke and someone doesn't get it and then you need to explain it. And that's it. It's lost. <laughs> like, it doesn't even sound funny to you after that. It's like... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Shilpa, I have a few more questions. My next sure. question to you is, uh, have you uh, ventured into any other genre or form of writing besides rom-com? Besides romance, I have written uh, some women's fiction. Okay. Uh, there's one book which is uh, due to come out with Rupa Publications. Wow. It okay. was meant to happen this year, but then I think with COVID and everything, it's been pushed to next year. Hmm. So uh, I really don't have a schedule for it because with COVID, I think nobody has a schedule for anything. <laughs> but outside of that, I am dabbling in nonfiction. Uh, but um, it's not trademark nonfiction. I'm actually writing. So the frazzled and fabulous post that you do. 
so i am actually writing frazzled and fabulous oh, so wow. it's going to be <laughs> yeah part uh, memoir and uh, part uh, parenting you know but a humorous take on it it's kind of like a disaster mom's guide to survive <laughs> motherhood <laughs> because I'm i'm really sure it's going to be very uh, chuckle worthy <laughs> yeah i tell everyone you know i'm like i didn't raise z z raised me so <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so, yeah. that's something exciting to look forward to for uh, yeah, uh, who readers who like your work so yeah, yeah i i am actually excited to know <laughs> more and read about that <laughs> so i that's that's what i'm actually working on currently and probably let's see when that comes out and when it's okay. done because that's going All to be best. a slightly more ambitious project yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay so my next question is uh, that uh, your kapoor brothers trilogy it has yeah. more, both uh, male and female point of views and uh, can you tell us how to go about writing such different point of views so uh, that's something that i really like to do a lot of books are written only from one protagonist point of view and it's very hard because you're only seeing one person's perception of what is happening in the story mm. you know as opposed to the other person has to explain themselves Hmm. so i really like to show both point of views but um something that i used to do in my earlier books which i have learned not to do uh, in my later books is head hop you know so okay. jump from one point of view to the other point of view in the same scene ah okay because that can be extremely disorienting for the reader hmm. so i i actively actively and i really mean actively because i think instinctively in my earlier books if you see you'll see that i do it a lot i jump from his point of view to her point of view in the same scene hmm. because i'm very keen to show you what each one is thinking at that time <laughs> <laughs> but now i try to make sure that each scene is one character's point of view you okay. know so that is very important i feel because there is has always been a lot of feedback on that saying that it's very disorienting as a reader if you jump Mm. and that's something that people tend to do mm. but when writing from multiple point of views i think you need as a writer you need to decide that that particular scene and whatever is happening in it who is it most relevant to and who is it most okay. important then write it from that person's point of view because they are the ones most impacted by what's happening mm. there. okay and then you know you move on to the other person that's that's a great great tip thank you for someone like me who has never dabbled into longer forms of writing that's a great tip thank you <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely something but i need yeah. to ask manali you're living in the netherlands which means i think that you know you don't have as much house help i'm assuming as we do in india right <laughs> how do you juggle writing and home and family and everything i uh, mean it must be quite a quite a lot of work for you Yes, in fact, uh, I, I just recently moved to the Netherlands. It's been only two months, oh. and okay. that uh, change of you know, because uh, when I was in India, I was living with my parents. My husband has been here since December, and I just okay. moved. So okay. uh, we were in a long distance relationship. So technically, I had no domestic duties to take care of because I was living okay. with my parents, and then my in-laws. They were all right. taking care of me, pampering right. me. <laughs> I had hardly anything to do. <laughs> so uh, when i moved here it became very difficult yeah. initially but then the one good thing that has happened in this long distance between me and my husband is that he has become very proactive in the kitchen and okay. that, that that saves me a lot of time now at least okay. uh, when i'm doing the kitchen work he is there with me so 50% of the time is saved in that okay. and the other thing that helps me a lot is i i follow a regular schedule like if i am okay. writing from 12 to 4 i will only write in that time i will not concentrate on other tasks right right that kind of discipline and schedule helps me uh, keep yeah. the juggling balanced <clears throat> yeah and uh, yeah that that's how the two months have been so far and they have been productive so i believe i have okay. found my you know the, the magic mantra i feel <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd found mine. <laughs> I still run around scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell everyone I'm like I I I juggle every day and half the time I'm the balls are falling on my head <laughs> because I'm dropping them. <laughs> Uh, but then i i believe the people who like us who are very creative they can never be focused on one thing at a time because their mind is in different directions all the time 
that that's what true. i think yeah true and something that i've started doing because i've realized is um, so the only time i truly get to write is after my daughter goes to sleep at night because that's okay. the quiet time you know hmm. and then what happens is sometimes a probably you're really tired or your head is really hmm. crowded with what has happened in the day or what's going on in office or what you need to do the next day so maybe you're not feeling as creative as you know you would want to at 12 o'clock in the night i mean yeah. even though that is the time to write i mean you you're not feeling the flow is not yes, coming yes. sometimes you write that one horrible sentence and delete and then write it again and delete <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, so what, um, what i've taken to doing is you know like sometimes because i have uh, my office is like an hour away hmm. each way Hmm. So I have that one hour in the car, and you know, I'm not, I'm not driving. I have a driver before you think I'm doing this while I drive. <laughs> I stay at the back. But um, what I, I'm strangely when I'm sitting in traffic, no, that's when these dialogues pop in my head, and I'm like, oh, that's a great way to say it. Hmm. And initially, has to be like, okay, okay, today when I sit down to write, I'm going to write it this way. and by the time 10 o'clock comes around and i open the laptop i have completely forgotten i know they ha- i had a brilliant thought and a brilliant scene and i have no idea what it was <laughs> so, so i've taken to jotting it down on my phone you know like hmm. either it's a dialogue or little notes you know just to remind myself of what the thought was hmm. so that when i sit down at 10 i can put it together you know yeah so, so my uh, equivalent of post its <laughs> <laughs> in fact i think it's called also keep notes so it's like a post yeah, keep it yeah. <laughs> i use keep <laughs> cuz otherwise you know in the night i sit down and i'm like okay now it's time and i'm like good god what in the world was it that i was going to write <laughs> so actually people like us uh, digital devices like you know smart devices any smart devices are like a boon only because whenever a thought occurs to us we have our mobiles with us at least so we can you know immediately jot it down yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean now uh, you know you they say you know we are so good at jugad <laughs> but we have to we you know we we learn these things with uh, time and requirement i believe uh, absolutely necessary is the mother, the mother of invention <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, my next question to you is: uh, yeah. uh, the characters in this trilogy they are interconnected, but they have yeah. their individual stories as well. So, tell us how you charted out each of their stories and backgrounds, and how one can go about such things. So, uh, like I said, when I initially started writing uh, Vivan and Alicia's story, it was never meant to be a trilogy, so to speak. I really just wrote Vivan and Alicia's story alone. and that was a that was a topic i really wanted to tackle you know when you're divorced and how people view you because you see when people have already gone through one failed marriages marriage uh we have progressed from before earlier it used to be like no 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 you can't mm. get married again we've progressed mm. from that but then we've not progressed completely because you know people still look at you and say ha to adjust kar le na compromise kar lo sab kuch to nahi milega type you know so that was what i i wanted to say why do you look at a person thinking that you know oh there's something wrong with them they need to compromise and that was the kind of topic that i was trying to get at hmm. and that's the story i wrote but like i said i mean uh for me um like i said i come from a family which is like this you know we are like this pile of worms and by that i mean like even this uh, you know not just immediate family but extended family we're all very close we're all very involved in each other's lives we're all over each other you know and that's what i've grown up with so um, automatically it seeps into my writing to a large extent you know uh, the family relationships the second thing um, with when i wrote arjun was you know you see in a, in a tri- usually in the triangles there's one bad person hmm. so there's an easy choice hmm. because okay, this is the right guy and this is the wrong guy but i didn't want that you know i didn't want her to go with vivan because arjun was wrong i wanted her to choose vivan because vivan was right for, right for her. her there was nothing yeah. wrong with arjun arjun was also right you know mm-hmm. mr right so to speak mm-hmm. but she had she had to make that choice to say this is the guy i want mm-hmm. it's nothing to do with the checklist that either one comes with mm-hmm. and that's why i wrote all of them to be the you know people that anyone would want to be with so there's mm-hmm. nothing to say that why don't you want arjun like everyone looked at me and said why in the world did she want arjun and i'm like 
because it's her choice that was her choice you know oh. doing it you know yeah so then like i said once that happened there was a i mean there was this huge outpouring of love for arjun and i was being spammed with messages of oh my god he has to get his story and this and that <laughs> and <I> okay <laughs> let's do this so um with arjun uh, writing arjun story i think was a little harder because he suffered so loss is something that we all suffer with but he is he's grieving so hard that he's not mm. letting go you know because he's loves he's loved so hard mm. and uh, to write a heroine who could challenge him pull him from that and get him to not only heal but agree to move on but also be willing to risk it which hmm. is why i wanted vihana to be that person whom you know he needed to be willing to risk pain again to hmm. be able to be with her and that's how their story sort of evolved for me arav and disha have been truly see i love second chance romances okay i mean like i'm sorry that's like my my <laughs> i don't know my soft spot there's something for me about people who've loved each other in the past <coughs> sorry find their way back to each other after misunderstandings one is because you can layer in so much more depth to the story because there's so much back story and history with these guys mm. right so um that's so arav and disha were interesting because i think disha is one of the most interesting characters i've ever written she is uh, and i i yeah. actually felt that too when i read the book about arjun and vihana yeah and in fact in my review also i have said that i want to read disha's story <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because so, see, disha is not apologetic for who she is yes yeah and and, and and that's and that's one of the traits i loved about her she's so unabashedly yeah. herself and she's not afraid to you know show yeah. her support for vihana as well she's like yeah. oh somebody needs to protect that girl right yeah <laughs> because vihana is like this little puppy right yeah. I mean, she has no hope self protective instinct at all <laughs> i mean vihana is uh, uh she is what they, when they say pure at heart mm. that's who she is she sees yeah. the good in everyone she sees you know she sees joy and light and happiness and uh while i i mean i i i love people like that and i envy people who have that kind of innocence when they look at life i think i as a person am a lot more cynical there's a lot of alicia and me to be honest <laughs> i am that too <laughs> but um, disha what uh, for me for disha is you know uh, disha is unapologetic about who she is she chooses she makes the hard calls she makes mm. the hard choices and she says yes i know this is bad i know i'm hurting someone by doing this but i'm going to do this because this needs to be done and yes. for me you know to take someone as strong as willful and as um, she's not your typical romance heroine and no, she she's doesn't not. become and she doesn't become that even through aravindisha's book she stays true to who she is the challenge was to show you how he loves her exactly the way she is oh. and likewise you know okay so that so that's it, going to be a very uh, interesting read because uh, they are such opposing personalities arav yes. and lisha yes because uh, and like i think i mean i had put up that quote uh, recently where i said you know vivan may be the charm and arjun may be the looks but arav is the is heart, the heart. yes i remember that and one <laughs> very very true you know and i've always thought it from book 1 like when i saw people reacting to the book everyone's always spoken about vivan arjun vivan arjun vivan arjun and no one's even noticed arav but if you see his arc from book 1 onwards he's been this solid steady presence you know who's mm-hmm. never wavered and you know these are the guys who you don't notice at first glance but these are the guys you want in your life forever <laughs> true true <Yeah>. yes <laughs> so uh, shilpa my next question to you is uh, uh, the third leg of this trilogy can you tell us what we can expect from it we have already spoken so much about it but can you tell yeah. us more? uh honestly uh, i mean i say this about every book i write because they're all my babies i love them all but this book i am i is very special for the simple reason like i said is i've written a heroine who who i'm very proud of 
I'm very proud of her for owning her, you know, um, her decisions, owning her personality, who she is, working on it herself, not waiting for someone to come rescue her, mm. rescuing herself and mm. standing, standing true to what she believes in, whether it's mm. right, wrong, whatever, you know, not making any excuses for it. So uh, I think that has been very, very uh, challenging. And what uh, for me is, uh, like I said, for me, Arab has always been the heart. And I, I, I kept thinking it every time I'd get these messages about Vivan and Arjun and, you know, oh, I would love a guy like him. And I, in my head, I used to always say, you know what, if I had to pick, I would want an Arab in my life, you know, <laughs> out of the three. <laughs> So uh, it's a it's a very um, it's a very strong story because it's a story that deals with some very real issues. It's a story that deals with some very uh, difficult issues. Okay. It's not easy to talk about the kind of things we discuss in this book, and okay. uh, there's no easy resolution for any of these issues mm. like there would be for the other couples. Okay. Not that their resolutions were easy either, but I think this book, uh, even when you read right through it, you realize that nothing's really resolved. But they come together to as the people they are, you know, to work on. Mm. So mm. it's um, it's definitely a very very. Um, I would say it's a yeah, it's it's special. I I like it because. I, uh, <coughs> the reason why I like stories like these is because these are real people. Mm. These are not these larger than life characters whom you imagine, you know, you see on the big screen or in these books mm. and you dream about and you never meet in real life. You'll meet these people in real life. You know, you see them every day and you probably don't realize what all is going on behind what mm. you're seeing on the outside. Correct, correct. And, and I believe that's what uh, makes all of them so likable. Yeah. Because yeah. they are so real. Yeah. And for me, that's always been important to make sure that everyone's relatable. You know, I mean, they, you know, if they're jetting off on these private jets to a Mediterranean island for a date. I mean, it sounds lovely, but it just reminds me that my date is probably at mainland China <laughs> down the road. <laughs> and I'm never going to be getting off to a Mediterranean <laughs> island ever in this lifetime or the next. <laughs> I mean, which handsome, rich, eligible billionaire is going to take one look at me and say, my life is incomplete without this woman and I will keep her off her feet. <laughs> and you know, because of me and my warm heart, I will change his cynical outlook on life. And I, <laughs> You can totally get a Vivan or you not an Arab in your life. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, this has been such a fun conversation. I just have a, one last question for you. Yeah. If you can give us your three top uh, tips for writing, what would that be? Uh, three tips for writing. Uh, one thing that I always tell everyone is write the story that you want to tell. Hmm. Don't try to write a story that you heard or believe will sell or write to market as they call it. Hmm. Because if you don't love your story and if you're not sold on your story, nobody else is ever going to because your conviction needs to come through. So uh, one is that. Two is uh, uh, don't overthink it. I know a lot of people who say, I want to write, I want to write, I want to write. And they they don't end up writing. Hmm. I think Nora Roberts very famously said, she said, you can fix a bad page, but you can't fix a blank page. Hmm. And that's really true. If you don't sit down, write rubbish. Like I said, there are days when for half an hour, I type one sentence and delete it. There are days when I write 3000 words and the next day just trash the whole thing saying, my God, what hmm. was I think? This is horrible, you know? <laughs> but actually, make that effort. But also don't force it on days. There are some days when it doesn't happen. And if it doesn't happen, do something else. Read a book or spend time with your family. Do something. There's no mm. point in trying to force creativity. So, and at the end of the day, uh, this obviously doesn't apply for nonfiction. But when it comes to fiction, I'm saying, uh, tell a story. Mm. Draw people into your story. Tell that story. You know, like show them that story that's playing out in your head. Mm. And if you can do that, I think... You're, you're doing fine.
Wow. Those are some wonderful tips. I think they are going to come in handy for me as well. Whenever I, you know, sit down to write a novel or novel. I love the short stories, honestly. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I genuinely have, you know, tried to convey stories which would be from everyday life. And, uh, you know, people would be able to uh, think like, unko dekhe aisa lage ki, yaar, ye to main, ye, isko to main janti hoon, ye to mere jaisi hai, something like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know because you want to read that and say okay i mean i can totally see this happening this could yeah. happen to any one of us right and while that's lovely i mean i love the other stories as well i mean every book has its charm so we don't read historical romances and then think a duke is going to come for us yeah. <laughs> i mean we don't but we love the story and enjoy it yes. anyway it's not yeah. that so every story has its own charm but if it's not told with conviction Hmm. you the story will never hold your imagination yeah, yeah. very true very true yeah <laughs> so with shilpa this has been such a lovely conversation i we, i i don't think i have laughed so much with anyone in my previous uh, sessions i have not been so you know candid about it because the other person was also not so candid <laughs> this has been very very fun and i'm so glad we finally made it after all the unexpected oh my god yeah and there were so many things going wrong with our you know uh, scheduled yeah. sessions <laughs> and uh, so i will be uploading this video and uh, people can check it out on my youtube channel yeah. my uh, wordpress blog and on my okay. facebook page and of course i'll be tagging you everywhere so you can yeah. also share it with your followers and let them know what a fun candid conversation this was <laughs> this was great fun i had a lot of fun talking to you <laughs> yeah okay shilpa i am going to sign off now and this has been wonderful thank you so much for joining me bye